Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to the Rich Buddy Live Show. I am your host, Rich Buddy, and we are talking watches. Thanks for joining the talk show, live talk show about luxury wristwatches. That's what we talk about here luxury wristwatches. And we have a few episodes that I try to put together, and this one is the collector's, no, wait, I'm sorry, the chasing watches figured we'll just throw one up here it's what the hell is it? it's 1 30 a.m here in california might as well do a stream so has anybody uh looked at the new omega snoopy thought about this watch any thoughts anybody like this watch I think this one is more significant than the prior two releases. It's the 50th anniversary. The 40th is meaningless. The 45th is meaningless. The 50th is the one. I don't like the fact that it's not a limited edition. Unlike the second series. The first and second were limited editions. The second edition was much more limited. But this one isn't limited at all, at all. However, one of the things I was thinking about is that I think that all the watch productions at the moment, because of the COVID, are limited. I don't think they're. I don't think any watch house is at full capacity. And you know, how long are they going to make this watch? A couple of years. So it, it might in itself end up being somewhat of a limited, limited production. We'll have to see how that works out. I definitely think it's uh, extremely unique in its function, form and function. It's, it's, it's definitely unique. So you guys know that the Snoop, the silver Snoopy award is a war is an award that was created by NASA, some kind of a safety, uh, a safety measure and um, apparently when Apollo 13 was in dire straits and they were gonna have to uh, shoot the moon to make the US orbit to avoid catastrophe 
they uh, timed their thruster blast or something or another with 14 seconds on their Omega Speedmaster. So it quite literally saved the mission. And that's the whole thing behind this. Quite interesting. It's a 42 millimeter case. One of the things they don't show you on the website is, is what we just talked about. The orbit around the moon to come back to Earth where they slingshot around the moon. That is portrayed on the, uh, on the bracelet strap. But they don't show that here. I don't think they do. Let's see if this plays. You won't play this video. Huh. So the strap itself is collectible. And I mean, geez, Louise, you can't wear the strap. At least you better make sure you have a backup strap. You don't want to use this initial strap. Let, let's go over some of the key features it talks about here. It's a 42 millimeter case. That doesn't work. The video here doesn't work too bad. This is interesting. It's a dot over 90 bezel. A white enamel on a blue ceramic bezel and includes a nod to Speedmaster history with a dot over 90 bezel. The blue color theme continues on the silver dial with blue PVD angle shaped hour markers and hands. <clears throat> I mean, that looks great. It looks great. And then it's a silver dial, which you never see that. F.P. Jorn does that. So the Havana watch, I'm actually going to have two silver dial watches, uh, believe it or not. It's kind of weird. <clears throat> so you see in the center of the dial there, it's marked AG925. So the dial is pure silver, sprayed with an off-white gray, what have you. There's a tone there. It's sprayed, sprayed with an off-white. And that's the same thing with my uh, Havana. It's a silver dial, and it's dipped in... Uh, a blend of gold and ruthenium. So I think that's kind of neat. It has a relation to Jorn there. The, the I got to tell you, the back of the watch is the key feature here. What Archie says was very gimmicky. I got to tell you, it is very gimmicky on a high level, though. You know, high level gimmicky, right? <laughs> So the earth here in this picture is it's constantly rotating on its own axis. So the earth doesn't move. It spins right where it's at. So the earth is always there in that same position as is the moon, but the earth, the moon doesn't rotate or move, but the earth planet in that photo rotates on its center axis and it always rotates it rotates every second that you see it spinning it's tied to the second hand the constant second hand at at nine o'clock on the watch that's the back of that sub dial the uh, NAIAD lock lets you know where to how to as a watchmaker to close up the watch in the proper positioning to not misalign the moon with the components beneath so it all lines up correctly. And as this says here, special attributes, the uh, Omega received the Silver Snoopy Prize the first time 
seven months after the Speedmaster helped to rescue the Apollo 13 crew, <clears throat> which I believe would have been in uh, October of 1970. So the manned mission of a Apollo 13 was April 1970, and then six months later, uh, on the opposing side of the back side of the case is the date of when Omega received the award. So, oh, what's interesting is that that, so now that Snoopy in his little command service module there, what I like is that that's the command service module of Apollo 13. It's not just any spaceship or anything. It's, it's, it's that particular module. So I, I think that's neat. That's a great homage to the entire incident. The most brilliant homage to the entire incident, in fact, though, is that that Snoopy rotates on the center axis of the watch, and he only is engaged when you engage the chronograph function. So when you engage the chronograph function on the other side, the Snoopy is the constant sweep hand and he goes around in a circle every second. He beats around in seconds around. But what's neat is that when he show he go he hides behind the moon because he's sling slingshotting. He's he's slingshotting in the in the moon cap in that uh, command module around the moon, just like the Apollo thirteen crew did. And when he reappears and shows himself on the opposite side of the moon and comes out of the moon, that happens at 14 seconds on the subdial. To pay homage to the 14 seconds they used on the countdown of the Speedmaster. I mean, that's how much better can it get than that? That that's freaking amazing. Very cool. Oh, there it is. There's the strap. The strap, the watch's blue nylon fabric strap matches the other blue elements of the watch and even features the tra trajectory of the Apollo 13 mission embossed in the lining. This includes their famous slingshot around the far side of the moon and the point at where the uh, explosion occurred. The point at which the explosion occurred. On their way back. You see that? That's very cool. <clears throat> the moon has been decorated on the sapphire crystal using a unique microstructured metallization. The earth disk rotates once per minute in sync with the watch's small second hand. I, I really want to take a close look at at the etching on the the print etching on the sapphire glass. I mean, what kind of technology did they use to do that? That's pretty amazing. And it, it really looks like a photograph when you look at the real, some real good pictures of it. And then we've got the new caliber Omega 3861. which is their most recent Moonwatch movement. Four years in production. In order to match the previous Moonwatch movement, yet achieve Master Chronometer certification. But we're not going to get to see any of this at all. Ooh, ooh, it's manual winding. Two of my key features here. It's manual wound. And... With the 50 power 50 hour power reserve the big thing for me is it has no date it has no date window and uh believe it or not regardless of what this watch is if it had a date window i would never have bought it <clears throat> i would never buy a speedmaster with a date window no matter what so it doesn't have a date window very good no date window no date. 
I haven't checked the comments. I'm gonna check here in a second. Any anybody uh anybody looking to pick this up? Anybody get on a wait list for this? Anybody know they're getting it? Anybody interested in looking it up and getting it? So it's neat. It's got the Apollo, the Apollo date down south, April 1970. And up north, it's got the Silver Snoopy Award date, October 5th, 1970. <clears throat> I mean, and then this watch is released on the day of the Silver Snoopy Award 50 years later because October 5th was yesterday, right? So this watch was released October 5th, 2020, <clears throat> exactly 50 years to the day. So this watch has a lot of significance here. Like I said, I wish it was a limited edition like the ones prior, but I think we're all going to come to understand that due to uh, the Wuhan flu, the Wuhan flu is going to make everything indeed uh, limited for the year. I would say for the coming years too. I, I, I don't see watch production ramping up anytime in the next five years. So I think you're going to see a tight market, a tight production market. Because if I was on, on the watchmaking production side, I certainly would want to keep the market at bay in its high price realm that it is in right now. And I have no doubt it's like an OPEC conglomerate. And if it wasn't, it probably is now. And if they didn't, they should hold a closed door meeting, all the upper watch guys. And uh, in fact, uh, collude to uh, keep the prices and up and production level down. And, and that would be in good spirit for us as collectors too. We don't want our, our inventory to take a dump and we don't want our hobby to go south. So uh, yeah, but I think that's already happened. I think you've already seen that. For over half a century, Snoopy has acted as the watchdog for NASA's safety program, as well as representing total mission success. He can also keep things light in serious situations. Since 1968, the Silver Snoopy Award has been presented to people or companies who have contributed significantly to the success of human space flight missions. There have been previous Speedmaster watches dedicated to Snoopy, but none quite like this, combining animation with watchmaking art. That's true. It's very true. It is unique. It comes in a gorgeous white box. Omega, Omega does the best packaging. It comes, uh, it comes with a, a loop. A loop that's blue that matches the bezel here the blue on the watch so you get a, a matching blue loop um, I wish it came with an extra strap but I can't say it does and uh, um, it will fit a steel bracelet so when I pick it up I'm gonna fork out the bucks I'm gonna fork out the big bucks for an Omega bracelet and hopefully the hopefully the old style looking bracelet like the one on the 50th anniversary right here is the one that will fit because this bracelet here best represents the uh, 1039 bracelet you see here so this uh, 1629 bracelet 
what does it say? It says 1183 on the other side. So whatever this bracelet is, this STZO bracelet, um, I'm hoping will fit. It should. I know that um, I can put a metal strap on it. So we're going to try to get this uh, 50th anniversary bracelet right here for the watch. And how do you figure that's going to look on there with the bracelet now? All right. Let's go back to this and look at it. Imagine this on the bracelet now, right? So I'm going to put this on the bracelet on day one. What's that going to look like? <sighs> Baby doll. That's going to look sweet, right? Now, I know you're going to say, well, Rich, you're going to make it harder to look at the case back. That, that might be true, but it's still going to look sweet on a bracelet. It'll still look sweet on a bracelet. And, and, I'll, get an, and, I'll, and I'll buy an Omega strap right there from them as well at the same time, a regular strap. And, um, and I'll interchange it when I want to really spend time looking at the case back. I'll, I'll put the strap on it. But I'm not going to touch this original strap. That's for sure. Oh, you guys are busy, man. Um, what's up, Cartel? Preston? Calibra? Yeah, Eddie Van Halen, man. I can't believe it. He was my... Uh, first you know my my own my only rock idol that i you know really my first uh my first rock album was fair warning van halen fair warning and judas priest screaming for vengeance i bought those at the same time together my first two uh, audio cassette tapes yeah and then uh and then it was probably just van halen buying van halen tapes after that i, I mean I even have a Kramer guitar with a Floyd Rose tremolo bar that I bought when I was 17 years old, uh, just because of uh, just because of him. Yeah. Great speedy, huh, Dave? You think it's cheap with a Snoopy inside it? Nah. Well, you know, uh, Max, you make a good point there. Sorry, don't like it. Reminds you of kids' Disney watches. Preston doesn't like it. It has a cheap Snoopy in it. I'll tell you what, you make a good point there. <clears throat> I think that's going to help the watch. And, and why? Because, um, look, for one, I mean, they're not going to do it again. You know, they're not going to do this again with the animation like that in the back i mean they could but they're not then the next one that comes out in five years isn't going to be animated in the back um how many watches have animation in the back in the case back no, not many not many so that in itself makes the watch gimmicky or not i think it makes the watch very peculiar you know yeah, the presentation box is grand. I hate NATO straps, Dave, because um, if you're going to drop a watch because of a strap, it's the NATO straps, the one that's going to cause you to drop the watch. Uh, I'm not I'm not fond of NATO straps. I just don't think they look right on me so we'll go with bracelet and uh and i'll get another strap i'll get another strap that is, would will closely as match this possibly um we'll see what they got omega has such a huge strap selection it's ridiculous you can spend a week going there at the store every day looking at the straps so Most of Lange's dials are silver. No, the, 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 the dial is silver. It's solid silver. It's not dipped. Hey, what's up, geezer? Oh, is that so? 
one of the astronauts took a Snoopy as one of their allowed personal items to space. Hey, I've got a, I've got a good nickname for this watch. Nobody's used it yet. Nobody's used it. But Rich Buddy is going to name this watch and the world's going to take flight. The world's going to take flight to the name of this watch. This watch is called the Blue Beagle. Not the Blue Panda. Not the Blue Panda. It's called the Blue Beagle. So put that out there, man. Put that out there. Call it the Blue Beagle. I think it's a cool name. Well, you know, bust out the uh, bust out the jackhammer, uh, Preston, because I'm buying this. Yeah, too bad the uh, whole incident didn't happen uh, in 1971, but a year before my birthday. Well, the back of the watch, it's 1970. Yeah, their both dates are 1970, right? Hey, hey, that's cool. It's all good. Close enough. We'll take it. Ooh, I, I would not take the James Bond watch over this. No way. Any James Bond watch? You know... Preston, I'm really fond of the uh, I'm really fond of the uh, platinum James Bond Omega watch with that bracelet. The hue of that of that titanium, it's stunning. That yeah, I wouldn't mind adding that titanium James Bond watch to my collection. That's being very uh, serious. Let's look at that watch, gentlemen, ladies, friends and foes. Whoop. Let's see where are we at here. Can I find myself? <clears throat> um, Okay, here we go. Now I remember what I'm doing. Got to remember here it's, it's 2 a.m. <clears throat> I went to bed at 9. I got up at midnight. 10, 11, 12. I think I got up right at about just before 1. So I got four hours sleep. And we're going to look for this other. It, it, it's a Seamaster, is it not? The watch that we're looking for. We're going to jump around here on the Omega website and check out some of these watches here. Anybody like that bullhead? It's an odd looking watch, isn't it? So let's see here. Where's that James Bond watch at? I know it's not a Speedmaster. Specialties. It's not under specialties. I would have thought it would have been under specialties. But isn't it a Seamaster? I don't see it there. See all Seamaster. Let's go for that. Let's see if it's under here. The Titanium James Bond. Where is she hiding? I don't see her here. Where's James Bond? Well, I'm like, okay, it's called the uh, No Time to Die. I know that. Okay, there we go. Yeah, why wasn't it under Seamaster? I mean, it's a Seamaster. I knew it was. Here it is. 9200. Okay, I love this watch. This watch is amazing. I like this watch. This is a good one. 
this is a limited watch, isn't it? See, they don't make this one anymore. How come? It was a limited edition? Let me see here. Didn't they just come out with this watch? So was that a limited number production? 923 of them? Is that all they made? Anybody know? Anybody know? You know what, Geezer? I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm one of the first run pickups, man. I think I'm one of the first run pickups, Geezer. Pretty lucky, I think. You know what? I didn't realize how lucky I was. And I'll tell you the story in a minute. Um, because Bud tried to get the watch through the same person that I got this from. And it didn't go so well. And I'll tell you what. He was told, I have the exact text to what he, the guy said to him. And when I read that, I said, oh shit, you better make sure you get this watch because it's extremely, it, this is harder to get than a, than probably a Daytona. The Blue Baron, that's cool. But I like Blue Beagle because, you know, Blue Panda, you got to be a little bit more trick than, than that, bro. You know, the Panda, the Beagle replaces the Panda, animal, animal, you know, you know. Yeah, I hate NATO straps. Oh, really? With the flat link bracelet. Yeah, there you go. Thank you for being specific with the bracelet that I like. I like the flat. I'm actually wearing my flat link bracelet, 1968 Omega right now. Look, this, this, um, this new release that Omega came out with, this Snoopy release that they came out with. Okay, the James Bond right here we're looking at didn't do it for me but it's doing it for me now as I'm looking at this watch, I'm jerking. Okay. It's doing it for me. The watch on my wrist right now, my 1968 Speedmaster transitional, very rare watch. It's doing it for me right now while I'm wearing it. All of this is being done because I'm being jerked by that new Snoopy that came out right now. So that new Snoopy that came out right now has got me all hyped up on Omega it's got me to open my eyes a little bit in another direction and and uh, appreciate the watch for the reasons why I bought the watch that's on my wrist right now and the Snoopy that's coming and uh, how special it is, especially being a 50th, a 50th anniversary piece. And then looking again, reflecting back on Omega and looking at this uh, Seamaster Divers 007 edition on the screen here, what a wonderful watch this would be so Omega's got some good stuff um, Charlie Brown yeah Charlie Brown you've got to get this watch for sure huh <laughs> well we'll see what happens Charles uh, not 10 years, the most they can, the most would be five because they're going to come out with a Snoopy every five years. So the most you'll get out of this is five years during, and, and, and figure this during the five pandemic years, five pandemic years. So, um, I mean, this year's already counted for and gone. This will count as one of the years. And it hasn't even been produced thus hardly. So I don't know. Uh, maybe, be maybe because we're going to be 
seeing a world, a great world recession, a global depression. Uh, we're going to be seeing a depression. We're going to be seeing a uh, very poor performing national domestic products. We're going to um, maybe have low production numbers over all the watches, I think. And just in itself, it could be a limited, somewhat of a limited watch. We'll see how that plays out. That's what uh, Tim Masso said. I saw that video today on Watchbox. He said this watch is going to be $25,000 out the gate. He said that without a doubt, he said. So, um, so I have safety built into this, which you guys all know that's important to me in my position to have safety built into my watches. So, um, I, I couldn't remember when I looked over this watch before if this was a limited production or not, this James Bond watch. And, and it, it appears to me it probably is. So um, in hindsight, right now, at this moment, looking at this watch, I regret not picking this watch up. So kudos to any of you out there watching this show, recorded or live. Congratulations on you for having this, uh, this 007 edition. And you know, I've seen I've seen some of the chaps in our watch community pick up Omegas lately. Um, several people have picked up Omegas lately. Uh, you know, um, I wish uh, one or two of them picked up this watch instead of the ones that they did pick up. Should have picked this one up. Should have picked this one up. This one is a beaut. When do you see a titanium beads of rice? Has is that a first? Other than if you go to FP Jorn or Paddock, they probably might not even ever made one. To be honest, a titanium beads of rice. They don't. No, they wouldn't have maybe uh, in precious metals, but not titanium, right? Bitch and watch, and, and look at it with the straps. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the NATO straps, but it does look sweet on this strap. And they, look, they've got 53 straps to choose from, for God's sake. Look at this, look at all the straps. And it just looks wonderful with everything. I mean, I could do the same thing. Look at that. That'd be kind of cool to put on the new Snoopy. The red, white, and blue, right? Wow, that red, white, and blue might be good for this new Snoopy, huh? What do you guys think about that? They don't let me select the... Uh, they won't let me sell. Dang, why won't they let me select the Snoopy with the watt with the strap selection? Come on, guys. Let me pick the Snoopy for my strap selection. Moonwatch. There it is. Come on, guys. Let me do it, man. Just let me do it, man, please. They won't let me do it, man. Catalog. Okay, waiting list. Let's click it and see if we can add the straps to it. Ah, it won't let me add the strap. That would have been hella fun to be able to go through all the straps with my watch. Gosh darn it. My friend has this one. My friend has this Omega right here. He has this one. It's such an odd looking watch. But do you know the dial of this watch is it just it's solid silver. It's etched silver. Isn't it cool looking? And my friend looks like the guy on here. I shit you not. 
my friend looks like the this guy that's on the on the watch. I think that's why he bought it. He said his um his girlfriend, well his ex girlfriend bought it for him. And uh, I think she bought it for him because she was all lusted over him and she thought he was a god. And he looked like this guy on the wall on the dial. His hair is just like this. He's got that beach blonde, wavy all hair and everything. <laughs> he just fucking. <laughs> The guy rocks too. He's a god. He makes more money than I could ever imagine making in my entire lifetime in one freaking year. <clears throat> so he's a god. But yeah, he has this one. It, it's cool. I mean, it's unique. I, I'm still surprised they make this watch. It's so gaudy and so like so 80s. They still make this watch. I think they've been making that watch for a really long time. This won't play out. Will this play out? So um no so what they told Bud was uh this is the first production application of this movement this is the movement that is going to be put in the revised moon watches good point very good point that might add some value to this watch um especially being that if I have one that's dated 2020 as one of the first watches, the first year makes on these. Oh, damn, there's a freaking rat. You can see my infrared camera. Go eat the poison, buddy. <clears throat> um, so, uh, you know, First year run on the new movement. I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah, um, I'm with you on that. I do like the second model, the one that they had. Yeah, the $45,000 piece. I, I loved that piece. Um, I had considered buying it seriously when it was at 15,000, but at the time it was 15,000, 16,000. I thought to myself, the watch market was way heated and I felt it was at the top. I just, I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Got to be honest with you. I didn't know. And, uh, and then when it went to, when, when it went, uh, above 20,000, I knew it was gone. See you later. And, you know, you're not going to buy an Omega now for 20,000 plus. So let them have at it. And there you go. It's worth $45,000 now. Unbelievable. Um, I love the cartoon on the dial of that second iteration where it says failure is not an option in that cartoon speech bubbles floating there above the center axis. I love that. I love the, the cartoon boxes from zero to 14 seconds. What would you do in 14? I mean, yeah, very cool. Well, well thought out. Um, I think the greatest thing of that watch is that you're actually getting one of the Snoopy Silver Award pins, Mason. That is the most amazing thing about that watch, and it can't be topped, is that when you turn over the back of that watch, right? When you turn over the back of that watch, you are literally, literally getting... 
a silver Snoopy award yourself. That's the, that's the, that's the silver pin right there that they give to them. They're making probably a best replica of it. That's what I'm imagining. That's hand engraved solid silver. And that's the Snoopy of silver Snoopy award. And they're putting it in there, man. That was the one to get. Holy smokes. We all missed the train on that one. Anybody who has this watch watching that kudos to you. I, I wanted it at 15, 16,000. I didn't pull the trigger and it's gone. And I mean, you have a silver Snoopy award. You're never going to ever get a chance to get one unless you buy one at auction from somebody. And it'll probably be much, much cheaper than $40,000. They're probably not that expensive if they go to auction, to be honest. Probably just be a few hundred bucks or a thousand bucks. But here it is one in the watch. Man, it's special. I got to say that that's very special. And there it is. It's limited to 19, only 1970. That's pretty damn limited. That's very limited. Oh, look at that. It comes with one in the box too. It comes with a real Snoopy. You know what? I think that's a coin. That's a Snoopy coin. So that's not a big deal. The medallions in the back of the watch. That's what blows me away is that you're really getting one of the Snoopy awards. Yeah. Okay. Freaking amazing. This watch is amazing right here. <laughs> the only thing they could have made better on this was they should have made the dot over 90 bezel, not dot beside 90. But one of the things you got to love about this watch is um, the, the perfect color, the black and the white, it looks perfect. They use the perfect colors on this dial, on this watch, on the hands, on everything, just perfect. Um, yeah. So there you go. I mean, uh, it's the next best thing, okay? Um, I, I like the third series of this watch, the one that I'm, uh, I'm getting, is I like it much, much better than the first series of this watch. So I agree the second one is the best. The first one is uh, not the best. The third one's the second best one. And, uh, but it is... I, I, I got to be at least thankful that I'm going to get it and and also realize that it, it is an animated piece. So it's got something special about it in itself. And, and it's a 50th anniversary. So it, it's got some special specialities for itself. Oh, I love the Alaska project. I've wanted the one of those Alaska projects uh, before any Speedmaster ever. That was the first Omegas I ever wanted was the Alaska project. I, I always was in love with those sub dials, those odd shaped sub dial hands just did it for me. You know, is the blue beagle hot horology? Yeah, why not? They spent four years developing that movement. So that movement, it, it, they're introducing a higher horological mu movement, their best Moonwatch movement. Um, some trick animation in the back. Um, the micro, whatever they called, etching in the sapphire glass. Um, but yeah. I mean, why not? Why not? I don't know. Maybe that's up for debate. 
Yeah, you know what? And that's another good point, too. It's a boutique exclusive piece, Maison. That's a good point. What does that mean? What does that mean exactly? They they are doing more and more boutique exclusives. So Omega's trying to step up to the game. Like, you know how Paul Thorpe, our friend Paul Thorpe, hi, Paul, how he says um, that, you know, Rolex is trying to become the paddock game. And, and indeed, they had, they've done, they've done that. They're doing that. Well, maybe Omega is doing the same thing with these boutique exclusives. Absolutely. No, I have no, uh, no special fondness for Snoopy or anything like that growing up. I mean, Eddie Van Halen was, those were the kind of characters I, uh, I looked up to, uh, yeah, I never was into any kind of characters. Um, I played Dungeons and Dragons when I was in fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade. I didn't play with, uh, with dolls and Snoopy and stuff. I played with Dungeons and Dragons and uh, whatever else kids played with, B BB guns, 22 rifles. Yeah, I used to rock out. Used to rock out. Anthony says he's got, I've got the 2019 Apollo 11 with the same movement from the new Snoopy, and it's up five grand from when I bought it. Nice. Wow. Five grand in a year. I'm not sure which watch that is. I'm going to have to go in and check it out. 2019 Apollo 11. What did they tell you, John, about when you're going to get it? Oh, I forgot to tell you what. Uh, yeah, I'll leave this uh, this stream up. So let's see. Uh, so. Um, so when my friend Bud called the same uh, dealer to get the watch. He said the guy told him that Rich Buddy is in a special situation. And if Bud had wanted to get the watch, he would have to pay in full for the watch today. But he would be on a wait list for two years out. Because quite literally today, he got over 100 people who called to get on the wait list today. Uh, or he said there's 100 people in front of, there would be 100 people in front of him if he were to place the order today and put a full deposit. That's uh, not, a, that's what he said, not 100 people today. He said, there's 100 people in front of you. Um, he said, He said, and today, every 30 minutes, 10 people are calling and adding themselves to the wait list. 10 people every 30 minutes are calling in all day today. 10 people a day, 10 people every 30 minutes. And they're open for eight hours. So 20, that means they're getting 160 calls a day on day one to get added to the wait list, 160 calls today. So that's crazy. So um, it's funny because um, I actually didn't uh, place myself on a wait list for this watch, but the guy did it for me. And when I called him yesterday, he laughed. He said, I saw your name come up on the caller ID, Rich. And I sat there and let it ring for a couple of rings while I, while I had to contain myself because I was laughing. And I told my guy, I said, look, the guy's calling or something like this, he said. And anyway, 
he he had to chuckle with himself because he says I he said I knew this guy was going to call for the watch, so I put you on the wait list. He took it upon himself to put me on the wait list. Isn't that amazing? So I got put on the very first wait list. So, you know, he just turned me into a, a lifelong client there. So I'll tell you this. I'll guarantee you this 100% that I'll be purchasing every single Snoopy watch every five years. I'll be buying a Snoopy, the next version, the next version, the next version. So now I've got it set in my mind. I've got two Omega Speedmasters and I'm never going to buy anything else other than Speedmasters from Omega. And uh, they're going to be a Snoopy every five years. So I've got two in the bag, one Snoopy and one vintage in the bag. And that's it. Going forward, I'm just going to buy, and 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 I'll be on that list every. I'll just bam, get on that list. I'll just do it every time. They, um, I think they. You know what? I, I'm not sure how. Uh, Maybe it makes a, well, it made a difference for me. You know, that's why the guy knows me. I walk in there and I talk with him all the time. And I, uh, so definitely, definitely. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't think it should be, it doesn't have to be reserved, but I think it just, it, it, it happens anyway. What you're saying is what you're saying is the case wait lists are primarily for people who are walking in to go get the watch you know when did he say uh you might get it anthony Hopefully you get it one of the first runs, huh? Hopefully you get one of the first runs. Yeah, that's what I figure. Speedmaster combo meal deal. Let's just start building. What do you think, guys? Start building a little Speedmaster collection, right? We got we got we got the perfect vintage. I mean, you can't get any better than an 861 transitional with an applied metal logo the, i mean anybody that looks at this watch is gonna is gonna know it's a three two one they're gonna know it's a three two one i will trick anybody with this watch because it, it's a three two one there's no way to know what's inside and there is no eight six one you can do that with save mine i have the only 861 that you can show to any expert and when they look at it they're going to say it's a 321 the only way they're going to know is if they open it and uh, that watch was only made for a period of about six to nine weeks six to nine weeks this Omega on my wrist is more rare than this Snoopy on the screen or um, any Omega watch ever produced for that matter. And then, um, and you know what's cool is that, so this one's a 1968 and uh, the, yeah, and then, and then I'm going to have a 2020. Damn near 50 years apart, 52 years apart, these watches. A great discussion. Uh, two watches to greatly discuss and have great discussions in, a, in your watch box, you know?
you can pull up an original 68 transitional and talk about it and how it was made and all the special things about it and why it's special and its rarity. And then you could fast forward to the 2020 50th anniversary with the animated back and talk about space. Man, that's what a watch box should be all about. You know, I don't know anything about the Speedy Tuesday list, Charlie Brown, but I'll tell you what, now that I'm getting my, uh, you know, first boutique piece, um, I'll make sure I get on those lists and get some of those special Speedmasters now. Yeah, I don't know. Do you think the silver dial, you think the paint on the silver dial is going to patina in a certain way? Yeah, I mean, it might. Um, I, I don't know. A, a true watchmaker would probably be able to answer that question. He might tell you that it's not going to patina at all. And that's one of the reasons why they used a silver dial for preservation. That, that's kind of things that I think, you know, silver is not going to rot or let, not change in color or tone or anything. And therefore, that dial may never patina. I don't know. So, yeah, um, let's see here. Yeah, this watch came out of left field for me. You know, uh, well, sort of. Maybe, maybe, maybe a, lit right, a, a little right of center left field. Because, you know, when this watch was announced, when was this watch announced? Remember? They released it on Instagram. We talked about it. We did a live stream about it. They said coming October 2020, you know, Snoopy, right? So a couple of months ago it was, right? Maybe two, three months, three months ago. Um, I called one place and the guy promised me I was going to get it. So that's why I didn't call the boutique uh, but that person ended up flaking out and falling through and told me to go, you know, go do myself. So, um, when I saw it released yesterday, I said, man, you know what? <clears throat> you kind of really want that watch. Now that you've seen it, I liked it. So... Made the call. Simple as that. Oh, the Speedy Tuesday. You had to email in. If you got the first one, you couldn't get the second one. Oh, wow. You come first serve. They sent the watch to an OB of your... <clears throat> I see. You know, Breitling does that. Breitling does that. And I got on the list for the 806 re-edition Navitimer. And um, I was one of the first people who inquired. I called. They told me I'm on the list. I'm going to get it 100%. Right when it gets released, I'll get, I'll get it. And uh, they called me with the watch. And um, I canceled the order. I paid for it, and then I called back the next day and canceled it. And um, Breitling does that. So Breitling does that. The Breitling Navitimer re-edition. 
Man, that watch didn't hit. That that watch didn't hold, did it? What do you reckon happened to that watch? Why did the price go down on that 1959 re-edition 806? Why did that happen? I'm glad I didn't buy it now because the price went down, right? And um, look, as far as the price going down, uh, I still would have kept the watch. It isn't like I bought the watch and I'm not going to, and I'm going to, was, was going to wear it for one year and then sell it. No, of course not. It was going to sit in the box just as long as these Universal Genevs and Doxes and everything else is sitting in my box. But uh, the fact of the matter is that it just you don't take pleasure in seeing things go down when you think, oh, it's such a special watch, at least to you in your heart. Uh, you know, the, the, the way it was thought out, the, um, the, the hand painting. Uh, uh, the, come on, man. I, I, I still want that watch. I still want that watch. So, you know, that might still be one of my only brightlings that um, I add one day. But there, there's there's other brightling watches that appeal to me more than a Navitimer. And that's why I didn't pull the trigger. I canceled the trigger on it. <clears throat> um, because I honestly liked something simpler, like a vintage Top Time. I really fell in love with a Top Time. And, you know, I, I saw one for $3,800, and I, I tried to get it, but I didn't try hard enough. The money wasn't burning a hole in my pocket, so I didn't. But, um, you know, I think I might reach back and grab a vintage top time one of these days. And um, we'll put it in the box there next to the Universal Genève. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Oui, oui. Oui, oui, oui. Mon chéri. Right? There's some good Instagrams of that Omega Moon watch. Um, of the animation of it. Perhaps I can find... Uh, I can find some. Let me, let me see if we can go and find... The Omega. Let's see if we can't find it. Omega. Omega. Omega, 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 Omega. Okay. All right, check this out. I think this is going to show some of the cool animation that goes on on the case back, all right? See if there's another one. I think there was a better, another one too. I mean, I was looking for watches and stuff, pictures and things for the watch. There, there's nothing out there yet. Nobody's got this thing yet. So.
think that's all I got. Yeah. That's all she wrote. No cartel, because um, look, it, 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 in actuality, it's gonna look the the second one. I would say the second one would have been, the second one would have been important enough. The one that has a silver medallion enclosed in the case back would have been important for me enough to get on the gray. I, I should have bought one at fifteen, sixteen thousand, which which was well over, you know. Uh, which was an extra five thousand bucks out of pocket after tax. I should have done it. Should have done it. I wasn't into Omega enough. Man, I knew that watch was special with that damn medallion in the back, being a limited piece. Um, but you know, it, when when I was thinking about it at sixteen thousand, when I was thinking about it at sixteen thousand. It that quickly jumped to 20. It that quickly, and before too long, it was 26. I mean, it went that quick weeks upon weeks only. And, and now the damn thing's $45,000. Are you kidding me? And, um, and, and if I had it, look, I wouldn't sell it. I wouldn't sell it, not even for 45,000. You know, let it keep going. That watch is absolutely stunning. You're not going to top that one. It's it's kind of tough, man. It, it's got that beautiful medallion, beautiful medallion encased in the back. I mean, that's just I just can't imagine. That, that's why. That's why I, I said to myself, I mean, they're going to come out with some nice Snoopy this year, but how are they going to top that case back? They really had to come up with something special, which they did. Uh, I don't think you're topping it still, but um, I don't think you're topping it at all. But look, I'll tell you which one else in hindsight. You know what? I'll tell you another one that is the same thing. It's going to go up in value. I just think I know it's not as attractive. I know it's not, but... I think the case back is very special on this too. It might not be special enough to make anything happen with the watch, but I think all of the fifties right here, this one here, this one has a very special case back. Look at that. It, it's not as limited, but I just, I thought the case back on this one was also stunning. Stunning. I think it's amazing. So I think this watch is undervalued, underestimated. I think one day it'll be appreciated. More so for its case back. But but the nine o'clock engraving is, um, is, is, is fabulous just as well. I mean, with the gold applique, everything on this watch is stunning. Okay, but you know, um, I like I like the back subdial of this watch. Blows me the way. Blows me away. And uh, I actually had um, put a deposit on this watch too, and I canceled my order. I put a deposit on this watch and I canceled my order. Yeah, Rich Buddy does a lot of things with watches you guys don't know about behind the scenes. I don't tell you guys everything, but I did. Um, I, I, I don't think you can go wrong with this watch right here. I love this watch. And look, look at it, this one. They put the 11 only the number at 11 at 11 o'clock here. You see the 11 is only for, you see that? Apollo 11, inspired by Apollo 11. All right. You see how the 11 is at the dial, on the dial at 11 o'clock only there. 
dot over 90 bezel flat link bracelet i mean this watch is gorgeous this watch is the the gold applied omega logo i love this watch i'd rather have this than the james bond titanium all day long Isn't that beautiful? And you know it's got the flat link bracelet. Buzz Aldrin climbing down on the lunar surface. And then the footprint. Black and decorative inner case back shows Buzz Aldrin's laser engraved footprint on the lunar surface with Neil Armstrong's legendary quote written in 18 karat gold plated lettering. It's stunning. It's stunning. To, to add this to my Snoopy and go with a NASA theme in my collection, I'm not kidding you. I'm going there. I'm going there. I'm, I'm going there. It, it, I've always been a NASA freak, but I never took it into the watches. I, I just might go there. I just might go there. Just, I, I might be. I might buy these watches just for the case backs. You know. And and I'm I'm so disappointed I didn't get the second Snoopy. So I promise myself now that I will buy every Snoopy Omega makes from this point forward. I missed the best one. You'll never get it again. Maybe if we're lucky, they'll do another Snoopy silver dial medallion case back. But I, I would give anything to have that one with this, with the with the award in the back of the watch. That is so special. Holy, holy. Yeah. Holy shoes, man. And look at this one. Look at the case box on this. Look how it lands. When you when you when you open the box, it actually floats up in the sky. No, I'm just kidding. Isn't that cool though? Look at that box. Comes with a lunar module like that. Does the damn thing actually come out of the box? The fuck. Look at all the stuff it comes with too. See that? What an amazing kit. And look at the look at the look at the special strap. It has a strap that has gold uh, gold throughout it to match the watch. It's got a special strap. What a kit. What a kit. And it's got the new engine, the 3861 manual wind. Same thing that's in the new Snoopy. Come on, guys. Isn't this watch a good watch right here, this one? I'm going on an Omega kick. No way. Did he really? He just got the new Kermit. <laughs> oh, from that one, that one punter was really serious. He told them, I'll get you a new Kermit. Just right. If you want it, I'll get it. You get it done. He must have went for that, huh? Wow. Congratulations, Archie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Clive's trying to get that Kermit too. Omega has the nicest boxes, that's for sure. 
oh, you think you prefer the Ed White? Yeah, I'd have to look at that one too. All right, guys, I think I've hit my limit. I think I've hit my limit. Yeah, that'd be cool if it came with some moon rock, fake moon rock dust. But yeah, so hopefully that watch uh, that watch deal happens and I do get it. And uh, if that's the case, I'll uh, I'll share it with you guys when uh, when it's gotten. We'll have a live stream. All right, ladies and gents, thanks for joining. Have a great uh, whatever today is. I think today's Tuesday or Wednesday. Have a nice day. Enjoy. Thanks for joining. Please give me a thumbs up. Thanks. Adios. I'm not sure which one's my goodbye screen on this layout. We'll try this one. Nope, not that one. We'll try this one.